Hey everyone, I'm back at it again. It's been a little while and uh, thanks for being here tonight with me on this Saturday night, uh, cooling off a little bit here on my porch. Uh, it's starting to get cold. Um, so I'm gonna be not staying out here for too, too much longer, but uh, I've been meaning to do this video and put this information together for all of you now since uh, I started watching this series and purposely uh, purchased Discovery Plus so that I could watch the entire 10 seasons. Uh, I'm a, I'm, I, I'll be done tonight. I have like a few, uh, a few episodes left on uh, season 10. And what I put together for you guys tonight, uh, that entire series, I would just ask you guys to watch. It's going to blow your mind. I do believe that some of these episodes are up on YouTube, but if you want to watch the full, I don't have cable. I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to cable. So if you want to watch, um, thanks for coming on you guys. If you want to watch that entire series from beginning to end, uh, I would suggest that you order discovery plus on your computer and, and, um, you can watch all the episodes until it's done and then you can just not subscribe anymore to Discovery Plus, that's what I'm doing. Uh, I wanna thank you guys for your your support and concern, wondering if I'm still gonna be doing coaching. Of course I am. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be DJing uh, again. Uh, it's been about, oh, well, last time I DJed was with my brother and that was circa 2016 and uh, yeah, it randomly, uh, this person came out of the blue and asked me to do it, thinking I'd be really good at it because he knew of my band. Having no clue, I did it with my brother for a little bit. Um, so to do something like that by myself was really, really scary, but yet yeah, really awesome. I have this like codependent relationship with my brother when it comes to being a musician and it comes to doing anything um, because he taught me everything I know. But um, I have a really good ear for music. So it was really cool when he was like, it's going to be 70s, 80s, 90s, which to me is the best decades of music, <laughs> you know, to begin with. And uh, it's all I listen to anyway. So it was just perfect. And yeah, um, it was really, really cool to get back out there again and um, make people happy with something I used to do, which was being a musician and to make people happy and figure out what was going to make certain you know the age group that was there try to figure them out and figure out what what they liked and keep them dancing for four hours so it was, it was pretty neat um yeah so uh i'm going to be doing that um i'm not sure this club is just getting started so it's not going to be anything crazy um most of you that work with me we have a set time we meet every week but for those of you um that might be thinking about doing like last minute appointments with me on the weekends like you're having a bad night still continue to email me um because this is not going to be this this because this is probably it's only going to be every thursday night and then whatever else that they want to give me for national acts that are coming through that they want me to dj for um in between their sets okay so having said all that thank you for your support on that it, yeah I, I have another video i'm going to do about um being a christian going through all the stuff i've gone through and then figuring that part out as you go back into secular world again. And I have a lot of things I wanna share with you guys about that, a lot of experiences to share with you about that. Okay, so anyway, um, let's get into this video, guys. This one's tough for me to talk about. I, I, I kinda almost feel like I was putting it off all week because it just, it gets to me. It just gets to my soul to talk about this stuff on this level. Um, uh, but what I'm about to describe to you all, I really want for you to hear me and hear what I'm telling you and hear what I'm saying about these people. And I do believe, I truly do believe that there came a time that a narcissist sold their soul. And what I'm about to describe to you and what that looks like. It's what I call, you have crossed over into the evil. You've crossed over. Okay, now, does everybody here have a dark side? Absolutely. We all have a dark side to us. It's just that people like us don't feel good going diving into that dark side. In our dark side, okay? 
does not look like their dark side. Okay, my dark side was sitting in a room by myself drinking alcohol. Okay, uh, not that it's 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 good or anything like that. Uh, but my dark side wasn't wasn't focused on killing or stalking people. All right. So so what, when I say that we all have a dark side, you're gonna understand what I mean when I get when I dive into this video tonight. And what I'm talking about here and what you're about to hear, what you're going to hear about, you're going to know exactly the kind of people I'm talking about because many, if most of you have dealt with this. And for some of us, we didn't want to, we didn't want to see this. We didn't want to see what I'm about to describe, but I'm telling you all right now, I've said it before in my videos. I've said it so many times. A narcissist, okay, a narcissist has all of what I'm about to describe in them it just depend it's just dependent upon how far they want to they want to crawl into the darkness how far they're willing to go how far they've crossed over and for many of them uh satan got to them when they were children and i've talked about this before satan got to them when they were children so he's got a stronghold over them more so than than than, than others all right uh do not forget, Derek Prince reminded me of this week as I'm in, in, in the middle of another prayer and fast. Derek Prince reminded me this week, uh, you can have the doctrine or you can have the experience. You could be raised on either one or you could have had both. You had experience, you had Christ-like experience and then you had the doctrine. You, know, you had the Bible. So, so it can go, you know, either way. For me, my story is I had the experience before I even understood the Bible. The Bible was, was force fed on me in Catholic school. We had a theology class up until I was 18 years old. I had to learn about even other religions and so on and so forth. So, so the Bible didn't mean as much to me as after I had the experience and then many years later, I came back to it. So anyway, I just want to remind you guys of that. You can have, he reminded me of this this week, that you can have, you know, understanding of, of all this by the experience or by uh, the Bible. And I believe that for many of us, we've had both. And that's when we really are waking up to all this. Okay. The, the, the number one way to, to recognize that somebody has completely crossed over into the evil is they dehumanize people. They dehumanize people. Why? Because they're soul collectors. Okay? These people are basically walking, talking meat suits that Lucifer has come into and has gotten them under their operation fully. All right? Satan is a beast, you guys. 900 years earlier from today, he was known as Lucifer, the angel of light. Even the prophet Isaiah said, you were the, you were the absolute seal of perfection, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. You were the anointed cherub. But Satan rebelled against God and wanted to emulate his power. So he's casted out and he took one third of the angels with him and he's in this entire spiritual realm that you and I can't see, but he is here, guys. He is here. He's doing his thing. He is in charge of the world right now. If you haven't woken up and seen who your leaders are, okay, who your government is, he's in charge. Wake up. He tries to lure people into believing he is the way by the flesh and by the earthly desires. He is good at what he does. He is good good at what he does and it's all to keep people away from attaining the highest spiritual existence of God's purpose that is the entire purpose of a narcissist coming into your life that is the entire purpose of of what these people have have they are vessels you guys there's nobody home the people I'm about to describe to you nobody's been home they're not home they haven't been home and the main reason for that is this number one word I'm gonna say right now. And if I could scream it from the rooftops, I would do it right now. It's called pride. 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 
These people have pride in a, at a level you and I will never recognize. Pride. They don't have moments of humbling themselves, okay? When you see these people in the jail cells or in the interrogation rooms, they're crying because they're crying because they're feeling sorry for themselves. They're feeling bad that they got caught. Pride. They are not sorry. I watched 10 episodes worth. You know how many hours that is to understanding from a, from a victim's standpoint. The show is called Evil Lives Here. From the victim's standpoint of what they saw and what they experienced. And let me tell you something. These people are not people. Okay? Now, the brother or sister or mother or father or daughter of this person that was evil that they're describing will sit there and they'll tell you they, they still love them. It's just like, it's just like us, you guys. It's just like us. Well, I love them. We loved what we, we thought we knew. We, we loved their multiple personality. And as Russ Dejar talks about, who unfortunately passed this week, which is really disturbing because he was like too young to pass. And uh, his work I put up on my community board today really has opened my eyes. Another one, he should have been on my video the other night. Uh, as he as he describes with these people, uh, you know, these people are all the same, you guys. They're, they're, they are possessed. They are possessed. They, they have gone so far in what they're into. There's no coming back from that. They don't want to. All right? For whoever, whoever it was that emailed me last night, okay, yeah, I know you watch my video, so I'm going to answer you today in my video. You emailed me and said that you are a narcissist. Oh, I was going to say Rush Dejard talks about how uh, this multiple personality disorder thing, multiple personality disorder, uh, really came on the scenes uh, in the last four, uh, four decades. Yeah. It's not psychology, you guys. It's not. And you you guys, we, we know that. We know this collectively. This is not psychology. A multiple personality disorder. We know what it is. Satan's getting further and further and further. He's, he's having his way. Well, look what end times are supposed to look like, you guys. Look what it's supposed to look like. He's supposed to have his way. He's supposed to get into everybody's head. Or try. Or try. Um, one of you, somebody emails me last night. I'm a narcissist. I have a double mind. Uh, it's like I have two personalities. Maybe it would be interesting to, for you to have me on your channel uh, and talk about what that feels like. The only person I want to have on my channel to talk about anything is the person that has recognized what they're doing to people and, it, and has fully put their life over to Christ to getting saved. When you want to do that, that's somebody interesting I'd want to have on my channel. That's the person I want to hear about. I don't want to hear anymore, honestly, from Sam Vaknin. And, and HG Tutor and all the others that are coming on the scenes right now. All this is another, I, I, I don't watch any more narcissism channels, but my clients are telling me, oh, this is a new trend. All these narcissists are coming on the scene and having their channels and people are watching. Guys, once you get the information, you, you get on with your life. Okay, it's not going to help you or me in talking to these people. You're talking to your enemy. I, I, you know, look, I hate to say it like this, but this is the truth. You're talking to your enemy. Okay, it's not interesting anymore. I'm sorry. You're not interesting. We, we, we understand that, that you, you choose these things. And I look, look, 
Everybody on this planet has their struggles. I get this. But I truly do believe you can control this. You can control this. This is a choice you're making to hurt other people. This is a this is a choice you make, a valid choice in your character to go along and hurt other people. Have I had opportunities to hurt people that have hurt me? Yes, every single day I have an opportunity to do that, to seek revenge, to get them back, to to uh, show them who's boss. Here, here's where here's here's where this word comes in, you guys. It's called pride. It's called pride. All right, I don't, I don't like walking around with pride. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel right. I don't like it. I like being happy and positive and, and, and surrounding myself with those kind of people. We don't want to hear from you no more. We want to hear from you when you get saved. When you get saved by Jesus Christ and you can prove that by your everyday walk and talk and things you're doing in, 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 in this, on this earth, then I'll have you on my channel. I'll have you on my channel. All right. All right. All these people describe when somebody has come over to this dark side. Okay, I'm going to start going through the list I've made. These are the, this is the list. Get your ears ready to hear because most of you know have met this person. You've met this person I'm about to describe. And these are the people, guys, that made it on the show Evil Lives Here. Evil lives here because they took their evil to this extent. And don't think for a minute that any one of you that have been dealing with these uh, malignant crazies can't take it to these levels because you're going to recognize a lot of what I'm talking about. First one, blank stare. A blank stare. They all described that they would get this blank stare in their in their in their face, and it would happen at random times. It might have been something you said that they didn't like. It might have been uh, watching a, a case on the news that was them. It might have been when the cops are calling because they they started stealing. You guys, one of the major trends. I, it's probably on this list, and I'll go through it. One of the major trends, when, when people start stealing and have no feelings toward that whatsoever, be on the lookout because when someone can start doing that at a, at a young age, be, be weary of what's coming with that. They can start stealing and not feel anything towards it. Um, another sign is your child or the person you're with, they start to get more quiet and isolated. You might have, now, what I'm about to describe, this can happen, you can start to see this with children as well as your narc partner. So be aware, they start getting more quiet and isolated. All of a sudden, they're not their talkative selves. They're more isolated. They're, you, you, oh, it's almost like you can describe that, like they're in, they're in another world. They're in another world thinking about other things. They're not even present. You, you're out to dinner, they're not even there. The next one is obsessed with guns knives, weapons, violence, violent movies, video games, violent books. Anyone into this stuff? Talking about it, collecting, sharpening their knives, uh, dusting their guns, putting their gun collection into the, into the, uh, you know, the cabinet they got for them. Loves hot, like obsessive with horror movies, like to the point where like they'll just sit there and they'll watch, you know, uh, uh, what's the one I'm thinking of there? Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre over and over and over and over again. Just can't get enough of it. Next one is obsession with the occult. They're trying to learn about the occult. They find, oh, I just find it fascinating. I just, I just think it's neat to know uh, what they're all about. Now, unless you're doing things that I'm doing and you're trying to learn about this stuff and you're trying to seek deliverance and, and, and help other people find their way. And you're trying to learn about what really goes on. That's different. These people have an obsession with the occult. They're buying books about it. Um, you know, while they're, they're, um, 
They're doing a lot of the other things I'm going to describe, but they do have an obsession. Some of these, these cases, you guys, that I watch, little kids, they were kids. Nothing was in the house about this nature. Nothing was even said about it. Nothing was ever talked about. They weren't even raised in a, in a spiritual environment. And you're finding these kids were talking about the occult and making violent drawings, which is another one on here. Just drawing really violent images. One of the kids in one of the episodes literally said, uh, Dad, Lucifer's inside of me. I got the chills. And the father recalls being like, I don't even know where he would get that from. I thought maybe it was somebody at his school, like another kid he heard this. Is the... No, the kid was telling you the truth. Dad, dad, Lucifer's inside of me. So another one is major, like, you know, violent drawings. They, if they're a painter, or they're, a, they're a drawer. They're drawing, you know, either sec a lot of sexual stuff or a lot of dark, dark stuff. All right. Um, another one is having an obsession with fires. These people have obsession with, with fires and, and, and starting fires and burning things. Uh, you will notice that these people actually enjoy hurting people. And what's really sick is the more innocent the person, the victim, the animal, the child, the more it's, I can't even, it's, I can't even stomach it. It's the more that they enjoy it. They enjoy hurting people. Does this sound familiar, you guys? Okay, now I'm going to get into the whole serial killer versus narcissist in a relationship. Because it's that we're dealing with the same thing. I, I'm, getting, I'm getting to that towards the end of this here. <clears throat> but yeah, they enjoy hurting people. One of the things that they do is this. Uh, they, like to, they like to watch people. Peeping. They're peepers. Um, they'll start, you know, they, they have this thing where... Uh, they, they like to get up in the middle of the night and just start roaming the neighborhood for no f freaking apparent reason. No freaking apparent reason. They're just roaming the neighborhood and they're, they're watching people. All right. They got this obsession. This is why they get into pornography because they're watching people. They're sitting back and they're studying and they're watching people. They like peeping. They like luring they like not getting away with it so they're gonna start to this is what now again you watch this series this is all you're hearing about this is all you're seeing all right um yeah so they're gonna start doing these really strange behaviors oh i'm gonna go out and get some ice cream honey and they're 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 walking around the neighborhood the middle of the night or they're in their man cave for hours upon hours and you don't even go up to their man cave because you just figure they're just doing whatever. You don't even think to bother or look in there. They're, they're spending too much time in their bedrooms or their schedules all of a sudden change and they're doing these weird things. The next one, as I mentioned, they're sex obsessed. Sex obsessed, pornography, prostitutes. People just become objects to evil people. You're just a body part. You're a Barbie doll. All right. Now I'm talking men and women. All right. Um, the next one you're going to notice here is they get an, what I call, uh, you know, the evil shift smirk. It looks a little something like this. You know, one one side of their 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 mouth curls up like this. They can't help it. It will come out. It, it it comes out even when you're first talking to someone. You're just sitting there talking to them about something, and they're they're thinking of something else. They got this. They're watching you talk, and they're doing it. The evil. Shift smirk. You're going to see it. Um, evil people have dead eyes. There's not, there's not, there's nobody home. 
And uh, when they smile, they don't smile with their eyes. It's just their mouth. You know, happy people, when they're really happy, you see that in their eyes and their whole face. Evil people smile with their, just their mouth. So watch out for that. This is another major trend of these people, of these robots. They're not people. When you make them accountable for what they have done, they are going after you. They are they are out for blood with you because you had to you made them accountable and 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 they are going to blame you for that. They are going to blame you for saying, "Hey, you know, Chris was around I I caught him walking around the neighborhood." Looking in people's windows. I watched him one night. And now that you told the police this, he, you know, they, they want you dead. How dare you make them accountable? They hate you for this. They will hate you for this. They will blame you. There are these, these people from this show that are in their jail cells. As we speak, they're in their jail cell and they are, they, they've been there for 40 years and they still have you on the brain. They want you dead. If they get parole, if they get out, you're, they want you dead. They're going to kill you for me. How dare you make them accountable and tell them that they, what they did was wrong. How dare you caught them? How dare you caught them? And these are the people that, that they, they walk around all day and night. They don't have anything to lose. They are the scariest people. Because once they've got nothing to lose, everybody's going down with them in the ship. Everybody. Everybody. You, the kids, the neighbors, you're all going down. This is why we've got the people with the mass shootings. You're all going down with me. I hate, hate, hate myself. So I'm going to hate all, you're all going down with me and my pain, me and my suffering. They have a fascination with causing you and other people pain, a fascination with it. Another major, major trend. Okay. Um, I can, t I can attest to this myself. I can attest to this myself. They have an obsession with strangulation. Obsession with strangulation. When you least expect it, when you least, they've been thinking about strangling you for a long, long time. And then one day they do. So this might happen in bed or this might happen uh, randomly putting their hands around your neck. If you recognize what I'm talking about tonight, you need to get out. You need to get out because these are repeat offenders. These are repeat offenders. And that's the next thing I'm gonna talk about here. Repeat offenders, okay? These, these people have criminal behaviors. When they start stealing, as I talked about, or they, they are watching violence, or they had a domestic dispute, you know, my ex-boyfriend had a domestic dispute when he was 18. Got taken off his record. Found out about this long way after I was with him. Many, many years after I was with them. They are repeat offenders. What they have done in the past, they're going to do it again. They're going to do it again. And the pathological lying is the next one. Oh, God. This one will put you in your grave early. Okay, if nothing else, the pathological lying. They lie to the point where they don't flinch. They believe their own lies. They believe their, their delusional way of thinking. They believe you're the problem, not them. They believe in their stinking minds and in their, in their warped d demonic minds that I have to convince everybody else that they're the problem and not me so that I can go on continuing to be a psychopath. Pathological lying. This is how they do it. And they do it up until they get uh, lethal injection. Up until they get, you know, the death penalty. They are still 
lying. Blows your, blows your mind. You think even maybe the hour before, you know, you're going in there and everyone's watching you get the lethal injection. You'd have, uh, you'd have some, some way of being like, all right, I, you know, I did it. No, guys, they already made a pact with Satan a long time ago. They know where they're going. They don't care. That's the part, that's the other thing I'm going to say about all this. None of this, they don't care about any of this that I'm, I'm talking to you about tonight. None of it. They don't care. They don't care. The next one is being the center of attention or always trying to stir up reactions from others. This is an evil person, you guys. Always. They are, they are know-it-alls. They love to be the center of attention by pretending they know everything. Or they're sitting around looking at you and thinking of ways they're going to get a reaction out of you. And not a good one. All right? It's constant with these people. You saw this in all these episodes. They, 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 um, they would do anything to get a reaction. We'll do anything to get you mad at them. We'll do anything to sit there and laugh at your expense. You know, with these sick jokes, uh, for you know, coming into to their sister's room in the middle of the night and tying them up and throwing them in the closet. Oh, I was just kidding as they're laughing all the way to the bank the next day. This is the kind of sick stuff they do. Um, I can't even. They have no regard for, for animals. Animals to them are something to toy with, something to mess with, something to watch a reaction out of. Another, another being, another creature to have them watch a reaction out of. All right. They have no problems taking out their, their evil on an animal. Oh, here's, here comes the, 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 the stray cat. We're going to get rid of him. Get off my property. These people, this is what they do. All right. One thing you guys need to know is that evil people will poison your food. Many of you don't know this. Many of you don't even know you're sick because your narcissist is poisoning you. And the very first sign of that that I didn't realize until I watched these episodes is pelvic pain. If you're getting a lot of pain in your pel pelvic area and you suspect some of these things I'm talking about tonight, a very evil person, they're probably putting something in your food. All right? This is what they do. Um, you're going to see also that especially when they're kids, they become obsessed with mutilating bugs animals torturing them uh you know they're 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 they're, they're taking flies and they're just they're squishing them but then they want to take the, the wings off the flies and again as i said before they hate innocence they hate babies they hate the elderly they hate animals they hate the disabled they have no patience for them as a matter of fact they look at them like you know so, uh, more more victims to toy with it's why in my industry, the old industry I was in, where I was, I was helping people that were disabled, I found a lot of evil people around me. I couldn't understand this. Why would you be in this industry taking care of somebody who has disabilities, trying to help them find jobs, when you are just an evil, rotten individual? Well, it's because it was an easy population to take advantage of. And that's the higher ups were in these companies you know, it's the same in the hospital, hospitality, in the, um, in the, uh, medical care. It's the same thing. You got nurse, nurse ratchet all around you because they can, they got into that field for those reasons. Be on the lookout for these people. They're everywhere. They get into certain fields to be able to do these things and take advantage of people and pretend that they're a nice person. Um, an evil person is is definitely at the very least two people, as uh, Ross Dejar talks about. They, they 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 have a split personality. You're gonna notice that they got the uh, really nice, beautiful, kind-hearted wife or husband at home. All right, and and the kids, and um, but then 
when they're asleep, they're going out and they're, they're doing all kinds of crazy things, murdering prostitutes and this and that. They get off on that, you guys. Just as, you know, we're talking about, you know, um, let me get into that in a minute. But yes, so uh, there are two people, one in public, another one at home. Or if their victim is the one in the house, if they're taking out their frustration on the wife or the husband and everybody else in the workplace and everyone else, they, they have to have a target towards their hatred and anger. All right. And that's how they, they can split their personalities to being too. Another major one, you guys, are angry outbursts. Angry outbursts over nothing, over nothing. Breaking things in the house. Out of off off of nothing because you 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 uh you happen to not make their the meal they wanted. Calling you names, berating you. Um, eventually, when they're doing these things and they're 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 destroying things in the house and they're calling you names, eventually they will hit you. They will put their hands on you. They will try to strangle you. It's coming. Um, and alcohol or drug dependency leads them to doing even worse things. Okay. Um, if if you look up the statistics of domestic violence and when it happens, it's when they're it's the percentage that is high is when they're on drugs or on, or drinking. Uh, psychopathic evil people enjoy power, control, and do domination over their kids and their families. They control everything that you do and don't do, okay? A lot of these people that were serial killers were doing this in the families and as well out on the home, if they're not doing one or the other, as I just described earlier. Um, another major trend is the entire change or shift after they have secured you. After they've moved in with you, after they have put a ring on your finger and went down the aisle and got that certification, marriage certificate. As soon as they got you, like clockwork. Mask is off, here's what you're really dealing with. This is why I always tell you guys, you cannot Ever move quickly with anybody because you do not know who they are and it takes years to really know someone um another one as I mentioned earlier but I'm gonna re resurface is the seeking revenge on people years and years and years later years later they still got you on the brain years you're moved on you got a family you got kids you got a career it's been you know, 20 years. Oh, they haven't forgotten about you and getting their revenge on you because how dare you expose them? You're going to get that. You're going to get it. How dare you? You bring out what they've done. How dare you bring out their crap qualities? These people don't ever forget. Um, Another one to talk about, they have an obsession with molesting children, babies, their own children. I saw some real disturbing stuff in the last few months, you guys, on these episodes. Really disturbing. And what a lot of them will do is they're going to use that polygamous religion into having multiple wives and, and hundreds of children... And then the next thing you know, they're marrying their own children. I mean, it is sick. And you think this stuff doesn't still go on? Guys, it's going on every single day. You got these porn-obsessed evil creatures looking at 12-year-olds. And next thing you know, they're in, their, they're in their daughter's bedroom in the middle of the night. Or your daughter's bedroom if you're, if you're the, uh, the girlfriend and you got the stepdaughter for, for them. I always talk about people that are obsessed with pornography and where this leads and it's 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 be it goes to these places. Uh, and the next one is believing that they are God. They believe that they're God. They're all powerful and all knowing. They can do whatever they want. They're that powerful, you guys. There's no consequences for them. Everything's all set. They believe they're God. 
Do you see what I'm getting at here? When we're talking about Lucifer. These people are all ticking time bombs. Okay. All of them. This is the other thing. When they're doing any of these things, they are a ticking time bomb and their behavior is about, they are going to snap at some point. They will snap. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. It's coming though. And I'm going to reiterate the very last one here. Once they know that you know, once they know that you know who they are and what they do or what they did, or you discovered what they did and you know who they are, they hate you and they want you dead. That's it. They hate you and they want you dead. You don't get to expose their fun that they're having. Guys, what the next part I want to get at, I don't care. I don't care if, if there's only two things on this list to all of them. Okay, I, I'll, I'll keep reiterating. If somebody has exhibited narcissistic tendencies, all of this is, on, is, is, is a possibility for you in your life. And don't think and don't be ignorant for a second in thinking that it's not. I have heard stories and I have watched this in this episode where these people didn't come out with this with this craziness and this awful horrific behavior until they were in the you know their 50s and 60s and it finally the monster in them came out. And for of God for all of us know it was going on all along we just they just didn't find the bodies or they didn't find you're all in trouble when you're dealing with this and I don't care guys I'm going to say it like this too. Now, each and every one of us could have been the one that was raped, thrown in a bush, and, and, and put into a grave in the middle of the woods for someone to maybe find a decade later. Oh, that's Tracy Garrity's remains. That's her teeth. Having gone through that, to having gone through all the, the mental torment and torture of a narcissist for years and years and years, to me, it's all the same. It's all the same. You're dealing with evil. And for some of us, we're still just dealing with it still in here, trying to move on with our lives. These people are still alive. They're not behind jail cells and our bodies aren't buried in the backyard going on to the next the next life. We still have to deal with this in here. And to me, it's just as horrible. It's just as horrible. All right, no, no one talks about it like that. Well, you know, would you like to be raped and tortured and tormented and thrown in a bush? Well, you know what, then it would at least be over. I know it's a horrible thing to say, but you know, for many of us, as we're going on in life and we're victims of this kind of thing, and we didn't we weren't the ones raped and thrown in a bush and 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 put into a grave or burned alive or whatever these sick individuals have done and, and many of you don't know my story it's going in my book but yes i was i almost died okay you guys don't know that my ex boyfriend wanted me dead that night he wanted me dead. All right. And I survived. My ex-husband wanted me dead a few times too. With the strangulation and, 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 and yeah, that was coming for me. That was coming for me. But you know what? I survived that too. And when you came that close to death, when I did when I was 29 years old, um, you don't ever forget that. You'll never forget what that feels like. 
And you'll never forget looking into the eyes of an absolute monster from hell, from the depths of, of Satan's creation. And looking at those black eyes, black, nothing's there. It's not them anymore. And that's the other thing, you guys. It's not them anymore. I know a lot of you guys want me to tell that story. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for that. Because that's going to go in a book. That's a hard story to tell. Some of these stories in my life are really hard to tell. And that would be the probably the main one. But um, these are the trends, you guys. Now, I want to talk real briefly about how to act when you know you're dealing with an evil person, okay? And, and you got to listen to me on this, especially if you're living with one, especially if you're living with an evil person, all right? The number one thing is you cannot give them a, the, the reaction that they're seeking. You cannot give them what they're seeking, okay? So if they're, if they're, they're throwing themselves on you in the middle of the night and they want sex and you don't feel like having sex, you know, and they're drunk or whatever. This is a horrible thing to say, but, you know, don't put yourself in a position when someone's drunk to make things worse for yourself, okay? Um, the main thing I'm going to tell all of you right now, before I even forget, is that if you... If you're listening to this, everybody should do it. Everybody should do a self-defense class. Everybody should do martial arts. Everybody. Because when this SOB wants to come home and throw themselves on you and get sex and they're drunk, you know how to defend yourself. And especially with a drunk person, okay? But these drunk, evil people, they're going to get their guns and knives out. You need to be really careful what you're dealing with, all right? Um... If they're trying to look just just for a reaction with you and they're just trying to fight with you, you need to you need to calmly tell them, you know, I understand it won't happen again. Don't don't engage with them. Don't engage. They want reactions from you. That's the main thing they're looking for. Some of them will just completely ignore you. They'll pretend like you're dirt, you're a speck of dirt and they want a reaction. Don't give them what they're looking for, okay? Um the first time they ever berate you, they ever talk down to you, they ever call you names, or they ever lay a hand on you, that's it. The first time they ever even speak down to you, you need an exit plan because more is coming. All right? You've got to get out. You've got to make a plan to get yourselves out. Um, they, your escape plan has got to look like uh, it, it has to happen in one day and they cannot know about it. It has to be when they are not home. It has to be. You cannot tell them that you're leaving. You can't do this, you guys. You can't say, hey, things aren't working out. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about getting out. You don't tell them that, you guys. You do not. You do not tell an evil person that you're looking to leave them. This is the mistake I made that in the very night. I told him I was leaving the very next morning. And that's when he tried to kill me. Um... Have somebody help you making sure your phone doesn't have a tracking device already on it or your car. These people are notorious for doing this to you. Um, especially if you're trying to find out what they're up to, they're going to make stinking sure that they do this to you as a, as a means to getting control over you. So you need to make sure that your cell phone, okay, is safe. And I would advise you when you're getting out to get a, one of those tracker phones that nobody knows your number or knows that you're using it. And that's what you're using to calling people to getting out. Um, you have to play a game with an evil person, you guys. You have to play the game of, I don't know that you're evil. And it's a very hard game to play. But once you recognize that they are, you have to do this to getting out safely. It's the game of, I don't know that you're evil. I have no idea. It's a horrible way to have to live until you get out. But you can get out, as, you can get out quicker than you think. Um, you can get out that day. You just have to know what you're doing. Um, you need to get a lawyer that understands this stuff. And you need to borrow money from people. If you need to, if you don't have the money, you need to borrow money 
if you do not have it so that you can get yourself out and get yourself safe. Um, make sure that you, if you can, you're taking screenshots of everything. When there's passed out drunk, you know, you're, you're, you're taking shots of what the, you know, screenshots of what they've done. You're, um, you're recording them when they don't know it. You have to be really smart with an evil person. You have to be 20 steps ahead of them. All right. Um, sometimes in particular situations, you cannot tell your family about what's going on until you've gotten out. Why? Why do I say this? Because sometimes your family is going to give it away in their face when the next time they see your narc and they're going to know that you've been talking to them and then you're in trouble. All right. Now you need to talk to people. Yes, you do. And you need an exit plan and you need support. But sometimes your family can't control how they feel uh, knowing what they know and you've went to them for support. Don't put your family in that predicament and don't put yourself in that predicament because the narcissist will want to kill you for it. They're going to know you've been talking to your family. So I would suggest talking to someone like me or a domestic violence shelter or a lawyer and doing everything else, talking to everybody else. That way you're not making things worse for yourself. And then when you get out, you can tell your family. But, but I'm telling you, I, these are the mistakes I made, okay? When they know you're talking to your family and, you're, and your family knows the truth, you're in trouble. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't make them want to stop doing what they're doing because they're going to be accountable for it. No, it just is going to make them more sneaky about what it is they're doing. And I've learned this. I've learned this the hard way. And it's really hard because you want to go to your family for support. You want to tell them what's going on. But these are all the mistakes I made because uh, things got worse for me when I did this. Um, you need to move. You need to move far, far away from an evil person. You need to get a gun. You need to get a gun permit to take it with you. You need to do martial arts. You need to take self-defense classes. And you need to always, always make sure you're checking your surroundings all the time. I don't care how many years it's been. I don't care how many years it's been. You you want to do a walkthrough of your property. You want to you want to be prepared when you have dealt with a crazy evil person. Now, the main thing I didn't talk about that is the most important. I'm saving this to the last. The very last thing that you need to hear is you need to be getting with God. And you need to have a prayerful life. And I'm talking, this needs to be the first thing you do. This needs to be the thing you do throughout the day. This needs to be the last thing you do before you get into bed. You have got to be praying. I have literally heard, you guys, okay? Believe this or not. I have heard stories of intruders coming into people's house and as they got the knife over the person, the person says, by the blood of Jesus Christ, I command you to stop. I command you to stop by the blood of Jesus Christ. And the, and the, and the, the thief and the robber, the knife goes off, goes down. Believe it or not. Believe it or not. Okay. Because what I just described to you of what's going on with these people, it's, there, as you can see, this is spiritual. Do you not? Did you not see by this list tonight? This list that's in my laptop. They're all the same. Did you not see this? They are all the same. Literally. All of them. All of them. They took a walk on the dark side and they like it. And they decided they're going to hang there. And, and getting to, to, to back to, to the over the other side, to the light, well, that's why they got you. They think they can hide behind you. Oh, this is my wife. This is my girlfriend. This is my son. Look at my sons doing all these great things. They hide behind people that have the light in them. So that's why they're going after you. That's why you were targeted. I want to reiterate to you again, why do you think 98% of the... Over a thousand people I've worked with are believers. Am I making that up? No, 
you can look through my records and you can see for yourself. We're targeted. We're targeted. It's not going to make your life any easier than mine. It's just understanding what it is we have to do from here on out. And what we, we cannot do is we cannot go, we cannot feel sorry for people that, that tell you that they're du duplicitous. That sit there and tell you that the, they, they, they've crossed over and they, they, you know, they know what is wrong with them, but they're not doing anything about it. You cannot, you cannot mess around with these people. They got their own messing around that they're doing and don't let it be with you. Double-minded people, all right, that are to, this, to these levels I'm describing, you're, you're, you're in trouble. So as hard as it is for me to put this material out, this is the truth. I lived it. All right. I still have a lot of work ahead of me in terms of what's going on in here and always checking that. But I just thank God, the Lord Jesus, that for many of you, just as me, we don't, we don't have these kinds of struggles to be sitting here thinking up ways we're going to get revenge and we're going to get even. And we're going to continue to walk around with pride and not see the forest through the trees. Let Jesus have his way with them. That's it. You need to have your way with Jesus and put him first in your life. And that's the only way we're going to combat this. That's the only way we're going to survive. Okay? Because as I said earlier, raped, mutilated, thrown in a bush, or walking around every day knowing what you've witnessed, what you, you know, I still have moments, I still have moments, you guys, where I'm like, are you, did that really happen? Did, am I exaggerating or did that really happen? Did, it, did this person really look at me with an evil smirk on their face and say, I'm really sorry I hurt you? Did that really happen? Yes, when I watched Evil Lives Here, I recognized that person in every single one of them. Every single one of these cases, every single one of these evil people, I recognized who that is. And I know that you guys do too. I hope this video helps you. Uh, it's hard for me to put out, but you know, the, the bottom line is it needs to be said. We need to be talking about it because a lot of us don't want to talk about it. A lot of us want to bury our head in the sand. But you know, that's us being evil too. There's nothing more evil than knowing that people are doing bad things and you're not speaking up about it. And you're not saying what they're doing. You do not go along with somebody's evil plot, plan, and scheme you do not go along. You don't bury your head in the sand when you see something's going wrong. You need to come forward and you need to do what's right. And you need to, to do the right thing. We're, not, we're, we're just as bad if we're not talking about what they're doing. We have got to put an end to this. This is what I talk about. This is Operation Evil and it's time we put a stop to it. This is what it's called. I, I coined it Operation Evil because that's what it is. And it's going on. It's, it's going on everywhere. We're seeing the divide right now. The anti-vaxxers to the vaxxers. That's what they want. They want us to hate each other. They don't want you to see their side or them to see our side. No. They want war. They want war. They want, you know, they want to be in full control over us. Full control. They want to change our laws. They want to make it so that we don't have a say. Wake up. Get 
your head out of your rear end and see what's really going on because they want you looking over here at Gabby Petito. Look over here at this so you don't see the hundreds of Gabby Petitos that are buried in the woods. And, you know, her own father said it. Her own father is like, I wish that they put this kind of emphasis on uh, uh, people that weren't online bloggers, the, the other people that out there in the world that went through this. Her own father said that. I mean, imagine that poor man going through all this and he recognizes why aren't they, they, they why didn't they do this for all the other missing people in, 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 in the United States or around the, the, the world? But anyway... It's a sad realization. I think that's why I didn't want to do this video because it's a sad realization for me of how many of them and how how we are, how they are the rulers of this world. But they don't have to be, you guys. It starts with each and every one of you putting an end to this. We can knock them out of the park. We just have to know how to do it. And it's not acting like them. It's acting like the complete opposite. Well, that's my message tonight. I can't believe I, I've talked this long. I never usually do an hour. <laughs> um, thank you for all your commentary. I hope that um, I didn't see what any of you were writing. I was so focused on what I had to say. Um, and uh, anyway, I'll be back uh, with some more positive stuff. <laughs> And uh, ways we're going to combat this stuff, uh, ways we're going to wake up here and, and see the truth. Um, some of these cra crazy, I call them the crazy Christians. You guys, are the, the crazy Christians are the worst. They're the worst. They're the most double-minded, insane people. Some of them have gone on, they, 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 they're calling themselves Christians, you guys, and they're the devil in disguise. They're the devil right next to you in the pew. They're the devil uh, up, in the, up in the altar, telling everyone how it is. How it is, is that you, you're listening to crazy. You're listening to crazy. You're tuning into crazy. Crazy. And I, I can't wait to expose them next. I, I you know, I'm I'm done with I'm done with these these Christians, these judgmental calling themselves Christians. And all they do is they give us a bad rap. That's what they do. I'm done with you two. I'm done with that. And they need to be exposed. All right. Crazy Christians. You know, with with your with your judgmental uh, taking scripture and using it to your advantage, this is why people don't want to hear what any of us have to say because they they assume we're all this way. We're all just we're all just walking, talking nut jobs, believing in some fairy tale god that doesn't exist because of how some of these quote unquote Christians are behaving. I had a I had a woman this week. This is why I'm talking. This is why I'm talking this way. It was telling me some of the stuff going on in her, uh, in her church. Yeah, I've been there, done that. I know exactly what you're talking about. And enough is enough. Enough is enough. These people are are, are walking backwards in their faith. They're not walking forward. They're going backwards. You know. Uh, it's a problem, <clears throat> and, and I've noticed it's a problem. That's why I started my own worship service. I had enough of this crap. I've had enough of hearing about it. I've had it, you know. Um, anyway, those of you that have worked with me, you're more than welcome. You know where to come every Sunday. We meet at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard. Love to have you there for people I know. I'm not having no more strangers coming into worship uh, pretending to be God-fearing, God God-loving people. Yeah. No, you're God wanting people. You want to be God. <laughs> you can, you can stay out. All right, I'm done for tonight. Love all you guys very much, and uh, thank you for listening to what I had to say tonight. I hope that it hits some of you the way it should, and I hope that you guys get the help you need and deserve. I take people for one-to-one -one coaching 
every single day, seven days a week. You can reach out to me at traceface.it at gmail.com and I would love to help you uh, improve your situation at whatever stage you may be with an abuser. All right. Well, love you guys. I'll talk to all of you soon.